Hi everyone and welcome to another recipe video and today I'm making these individual spiced orange puddings. Now I was born in England, a place where you could call almost anything a pudding as long as it's hot, but in this case I'm making the sweet sponge cake variety of pudding. Apologies in advance for the crazy change in lighting here, I was working on one of those days where the sun was constantly in and out from some really dark clouds, so that's why it goes yellow and then white in some shots. So let's get started. First I'm slicing up one orange here, and it's a small one, and I'm only going to need four of those slices, you'll see in a minute. Now I'm going to make a sugar syrup with 100 grams of caster sugar and 100 milliliters of water. So I'm giving that a good stir over the heat until it's nice and incorporated. And I'm going to boil four slices of our orange for about 15 minutes until they're a bit translucent. And once that's done, we're going to let them cool completely in the syrup. Now we're going to prepare four individual pudding moulds. And it's super important that you both grease these either with oil or softened butter and line the bottoms with non-stick baking paper. This is because when you eventually put those candied orange slices we just made at the bottom of these tins, they will caramelise in the oven. And what does caramel do when it gets cool? It solidifies, so you don't want them to stick to the bottom of your tins. Now we're going to preheat the oven to 180 degrees C. So you make sure the oven's nice and hot for your cakes to go into. To make the actual sponge cake part of it, we're going to melt 50 grams of unsalted butter along with 50 grams of light muscovado sugar. And usually I add the spices in later, but I actually decided to add it into the melting butter right now. So I added half a teaspoonful of ground cinnamon and a quarter teaspoonful of ground nutmeg. And my idea was that because it's going into a really warm mixture, it's helping those spices leach out those lovely flavours and aromas. So now that's all in the pan, I'm going to give it a good stir, just until it's all combined. I don't want to boil it, so this is quite a low heat. Once that's done, I'm going to let it cool to room temperature. And while it's cooling, I'm also going to grate the zest of one whole orange in there. And because the mixture is still a little warm, it's helping all those lovely orange oils leach out of the skin too. These oils are arguably more important to flavour this than the juice itself, but we are going to use the juice too in a minute, so hold off on that thought. But those lovely natural oils and the zest really are what gives this cake this real orangey zing. So make sure you get as much of that lovely zest off of your orange and into your mixture as you can. At this point I'm just giving it another good stir, making sure everything's well incorporated and making sure it's cool for the next part, because now we're going to add an egg. And if it's too hot, it's going to cook our egg and scramble it prematurely, so make sure it's not hot at this point. So give this a good stir until it's well combined. And then we're going to add some self-raising flour, 115 grams to be exact. And then stir this in until it kind of forms a thick paste. If you are making just like your average sponge cake, I wouldn't advise beating it too much at this point, but because we're making a pudding, it doesn't matter if it's a bit dense. In fact, it's kind of nice that way. And remember that orange? We're now going to juice it. Use all of the juice from all of that orange. Use a juicer if you have one. I just have my good old hands. And finally, we're going to give all of this a good old stir too. Apparently making an awful mess as we do so. But that's basically it for your sponge batter, so all that we have left to do is to assemble. After a little bit of a clean-up, of course. Now remember your candied orange slices? Now that they're cool, we're going to give them a bit of a shake-off to get rid of any excess liquid. And we're going to pop one each at the bottom of each of your moulds. And make sure they're quite tightly packed in there. We don't want any of the sponge cake mixture leaking underneath them because we want those beautiful jewel-like orange slices to appear right at the top when we unmould them later. If you can find a smaller sized orange than I did, then do use that. As you can see, the slices here I'm using are a little bit too big for the bottoms of these moulds, except for the one on the bottom right hand corner, which was just right. But I did just about get away with it. Oh, and save this syrup for later, you're going to want to knead it. Alright, last step is to divide that sponge cake mixture evenly between the four moulds. Then once you do that, you want to get each one a little bit of a tap just to make sure any air bubbles are released under there, but don't go too wild tapping them. Now bake them for 25 to 30 minutes until they're risen and puffy. And now you're going to want to cool them just for 5 minutes and then we're going to unmold them immediately because we do not want those oranges sticking, remember, at the bottom. And if you leave them to cool for too long, they will. So protect your hands with a dishcloth like this, make sure it's not wet, it has to be nice and dry. 
and run a knife around the edges just to give a little bit of anti-sticking insurance and give it a bit of a wiggle just to make sure that it's released properly and we're going to turn it upside down onto the plate just like this might need an extra bit of a wiggle here just to release it and ta-da it worked as you can see the paper did stick at the bottom that's exactly why we've used it before it does cool down and solidify too much i'm just picking that out of there and i'm just going to soak this tin in water and it will be absolutely clean and fine once they're all out, you're going to serve them with a little drizzle of your orange syrup. And that's it, they're ready to be served nice and warm. These little puds are delicious as ice cream, cream, custard, anything you like really. And if you're a Christmas pudding hater, these make a great alternative too, I think. And you can also have a go making this with lemons instead of oranges, although instead of the spices with lemon, I would pair the lemon with thyme instead. I think that would be delicious too. But oranges and spices are definitely more Christmassy. I can't believe it's almost Christmas already. What happened to 2020 and 2021? These two years have felt like a complete dream. Well, more like a nightmare. It's felt surreal either way. And as you can see, I chose custard for my accompanying sauce for these puddings. What team are you on? Team custard, cream or ice cream for your puds? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching! I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you'll join me next Wednesday for my next one. Get the full recipe on my blog tashcakes.com and find me on Instagram at tashcakestastes. Subscribe and hit the notification bell if you'd like to see more. Give this video a like if you liked it to help other people find it. Comment down below if you'd like me to make anything in particular and I'll see you guys later. Be good, be nice and have a good week.